In this analysis video, we're going to take a look at the swing of Francisco Molinari and how he is such a elite driver of the golf ball and what you can learn uh, to apply to your own game. Now, Francisco Molinari is having a brilliant month of July, uh, having two wins, including his most recent win at the Open Championship. He's currently second in uh, strokes gained ball striking, and one of the most interesting stats is per mile per hour, he hits the ball further in the air than anybody on the PGA Tour. So we're going to talk about how he's able to maximize his swing for driver distance and compete with the guys who have much more uh, club head speed. Because even though he is 117th on tour in terms of club head speed, he's 53rd in driving distance, showing that he maximizes what he does with his swing. And we're going to discuss a couple ideas of how you can learn to maximize your swing as well. So Francisco Molinari is the second ranked ball striker on the planet right now. Um, his putting has held him back in the past, uh, but he's historically been a very uh, consistent and um, accurate striker of the golf ball. There are three main things that I look at when it comes to uh, ball striking consistency. One is looking at the uh, swing plane or, or path of the club from the down the line camera angle and one is looking at the wide uh, wide point or where the width in the swing is occurring. Um, both of those are path constraints that help produce good sweet spot contact and uh, Francisco Molinari uh, does a beautiful job with both of those. The third thing that I look for is club face control um, because if you are going to have great arm extension and width through the ball, then you need to have a club face in a position that matches that swing uh, style. So we're going to talk about a key checkpoint for you to understand if you're controlling your club face and how that relates to the path. So here we can see a screenshot of some of his driver characteristics. With a club head speed uh, below tour average, as I mentioned, he's above average in terms of distance, and he's number one in carry distance per mile per hour. In order to maximize those numbers, you've got to hit the ball on the sweet spot, which would give you a high smash factor. You've got to hit up on the ball. He hits up on the ball 4.3 degrees on this particular driver, and you've got to manage your spin rate. There are a few swing characteristics that lend to all three of these, um, where some golfers focus primarily on hitting up on the ball and don't necessarily manage their spin rates. In order to hit up on the ball and manage your spin rate, you're going to have to um, control the face-to-path relationship and avoid having too much of a scoop or too much uh, trail wrist flexion through the ball. Flexion through the ball can help you hit up on it, but will typically cause lower uh, contact on the face and a higher spin rate. So when we're looking at a rough estimate of how he's hitting up on the ball, you can look at the club head height compared to the golf ball or compared to the ground. And what you'll see from this face on camera is when he gets the club down close to even with his uh, trail foot, the club head is at about the same height as the golf ball. You'll see that while the club head is about the same height to the golf ball and it's, uh, it's or even slightly below it in order to hit up on it, you'll notice that his right arm still has a fair amount of flex in it. The only way to really get that relationship is to have this tilt behind the golf ball or have a fair amount of side bend of the hips to get that right shoulder lower to the ground. Then he's able to extend his arms through the, the shot in the direction of the target. I frequently have amateur golfers uh, who come in struggling with their driver and one of their main goals is to get all of their weight on top of their front foot. You'll see that typically elite drivers of the golf ball get a lot of pressure into that front foot so that they can brace and angle themselves away from the ball but their uh, upper body position is actually going to be closer to over their trail foot than over their lead foot. Combine that with good arm extension timing and that allows you to get a very long um, flat spot down at the bottom of the swing and allows you to have great width in the follow through just like uh, Francisco is demonstrating here. 
Now, in order to do that, in order to have the club low coming into the ball, low through the ball with a gradual upward path, um, you're hitting it well before you reach the widest part of your swing. So, in order to do that relationship, your chest will be pointing out in front of the golf ball at a rough angle of about 20, 30 degrees out uh, down the target line, which means the arms and the club will be slightly behind your body. In order to, or when you have the arms and the club behind your body, that naturally opens the club face compared to where you were at setup, because at setup, you had the club directly in front of your chest. So when you have this relationship where you have the club behind your chest, in order to close it, you're going to have to rotate the club face more closed, and we're gonna take a look at the down the line of how Francisco Malinari does that. All right, from the down the line, we're gonna take a look at how he controls the club face. So during the backswing, you will see that the uh, club face is roughly matching spine angle. There hasn't been very much forearm rotation. Um, when he gets into that position, you'll see that the, uh, the V on the right hand is pointing roughly vertical. Now, when we get back down to that point, you'll see that club face is maybe just a touch more open than it was, um, and you'll see that the V is not quite as rotated on top, but very much on top of the, uh, the shaft. What many golfers who struggle with a slice or who struggle with more of a scoop will find is that if you look at your swing at this point, the V there, that right hand, will be a little bit more underneath the shaft. It will be pointing more back at your chest, and you won't have nearly as much extension of that trail wrist. That extension of the trail wrist is necessary for getting the club low to the ground, but not from arm extension, more from the pivot like we saw in the uh, face-on view. So this is a great little reference or checkpoint, and you can either look at the flexing of the lead wrist or the position of the trail wrist. If you zoom in on his uh, grip at setup, you can see that he doesn't have an extremely strong grip. The V is pointing much more just off his, to his cheek as opposed to well over to the right shoulder. So the weaker your grip, which many amateurs have, the more that you would have to get this right hand on top of the club. Also, the more that you're going to have shaft lean, the more that you're going to have the right hand on top of the club. A good little checkpoint is getting the club face pointing closer to the target earlier. This allows you to control the club face from less of a straightening of the arms and more with a rotation of the body and extension of the arms later or through the ball. So you can see a foot before impact or so, roughly when the club is even with the right thigh, is a great place to check the club face and make sure that it's already pointing um, closer to the golf ball. Many amateurs who I see battle a scoop and battle uh, or have problems with the driver, that club face would be pointing well over here just before impact. You'll notice one of the trends of some of the more consistent drivers of the golf ball these days is that they get the club face uh, closed to the path and pointing more at the target earlier. The more shaft lean that you're going to have, the, the more that you need this phenomenon to happen. So here we have uh, Francisco swinging a uh, fairway wood or hybrid, and you can see um, we can't quite look at it at the dead down the line because his the camera angle is great um, and the uh, club is blocking the hand. But from here, if you were to take a look, you can see just a frame after it, that right hand is well on top and the V is actually pointing on the other side of the shaft, not back at him. If your right hand gets really underneath, then you're going to have to scoop the wrist in order to square the face. That's gonna mess up your low point and give you more spin, which is going to rob you of this uh, ability to maximize your driver speed. So if you wanna be the best driver that you can be, Get the club head low to the ground and keep it moving on a gradual flat path with a lot of width and arm extension in the follow through. In order to do that, you need to get the face closed to the path early enough so that you can have that much lag and still hit it straight. If you're not quite sure how to control the club face or work on your axis tilt or any of the other uh, factors that I've discussed in this video, 
then head over to golfsmartacademy.com. There you can sign up for a free membership where you can check out all of our over 800 videos related to the key movements that separates uh, elite golfers from average golfers. If you're not quite ready to sign up for a free membership, then please like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. That way you'll be the first to know about it whenever we create new analysis videos just like this one of open winner Francisco Malinaro.